Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about how if you want to write for one of the X-Men books, fake bisexuality might be your best bet. So before we start, is this your graphic novel, Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel, links are in the description. Uh, the Hell Priest, oh, well all the books, I kind of did like a stealth Zach Friday sale on that, so all the books from that uh, Kickstarter from last month, they went out a couple weeks ago. But I just spoke to Marco and he says the 3D printing is almost complete. Now it actually takes a while for some of those larger ones. I've never done 3D printing, but Marco's really good at it. It can take up to a day for something uh, to print. So uh, that's uh, pretty awesome. So um, uh, SJWs love that phrase, hill to die on, which is the idea. They're, it's just another of their myriad ways to intimidate people from discussing things. Now this is not a hill to die on. I wouldn't even really call it a theory, so much as it's like uh, Arsenio Hall says, things that make you go, hmm. So uh, when Vita did this uh, post the other day, and by the way, apparently nobody clicked on the link because it's not an associate editor for books. It's for the website. So you're going to be like editing the, the Marvel.com page on Aunt May. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not for comics. Uh, but... Um, when she put this out, you know, I kind of noticed things and I remembered things. And I remember this, although I didn't remember it perfectly. I had to talk to a friend and the way he remembered it was the way that it happened. By the way, I'm also, you know, uh, you know, in geek stuff and it's, it's not geek stuff. If you're talking about like sex in the city and stuff like that, whatever, fan. Um, I got really angry at myself for uh, not realizing that Carrie owned the entire brownstone I just thought she owned one floor because you can do that in New York City, just buy an apartment. Um, uh, so I also misremembered Warpath as being gay. It was because Fabian Nicieza made um, uh, Richter and Shatterstar both gay. For some reason, for like the last 20 years, I've also been thinking that uh, Warpath was gay, but I just checked and no. So uh, geez, it's been a long time. I mean, it's not even three years. This is like two and a half years ago. This seems like at least five and more like 10. So, you know, Jonathan Hickman, he took over uh, X-Men in the summer of 2019. And it was very popular. They had, I'm not going to say House of 10, Powers of 10. I'm going to say House of X, Powers of X. Uh, because it's the X-Men. It's not the 10 men. Uh, <laughs> but, um... Uh, so he had that and then everyone knew he was going to follow up by he was going to be like the producer or the showrunner for the whole line. So he was going to have his own X-Men book and then there would be other people. So this one was kind of funny because I remember I, I didn't read the comic speed, but everyone else just talks about the six books. Uh, this is from July 20th. This one's from July 21st. So, you, okay. So it was, so I remember it kind of, what I remember is Jonathan Hickman announcing like all of these like legit proven writers, but the majority of them were straight white men. And then later as like an aside, he was like, oh yeah, we uh, also have books by Vita, uh, Cheetah, the Leo something, uh, yeah, th them, them. You remember from the Age of X, the terrible, when they brought it back? Yeah, that was amazing. And I noticed it because number one, it's weird to have a press conference and then at the end just kind of throw in some vague information that looks like right before you went there, you're like, oh, we're going to get torn apart on Twitter if we announce a line that has six white people and five of which are men. Oh, uh, what, uh, the, the Vita something? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that. And it felt very last minute, especially when it's Jonathan Ekman, who, and I'm saying this respectfully, seems to be quite autistic. He's all about plans and graphs and contingencies. So the idea to announce all the books and then just kind of wing it, Jonathan Hickman doesn't wing freaking anything. If he was, you know, got robbed, he'd be like, okay, I'm going to give you my money, but can we, can we do this again tomorrow? Because I want to have a certain set of reactions and I want to elicit a response in you. And now I'm just scared. It's just a bunch of adrenaline. So... Anyway, so uh, this is how I remember most of them. They announced it was this uh, uh, panel at uh, 2019 San Diego Comic Con. And then they list uh, the books. Uh, 
Uh, the panelists then revealed the new X-Men titles, Marauders, what? Marauders by Jerry Dugan, Excalibur by Teeny Howard, uh, X-Force by Benjamin Percy, Fallen Angels by Brian Hill, New Mutants by Jonathan Hickman, X-Men by Jonathan Hickman. I totally, oh no, it was, it was Jonathan Hickman and Ed Brisson was New Mutants. So a couple things about this. You got Jerry Dugan, he had been in for what, like 15, 20 years. Teeny Howard had been in for like 10 years at the time. Benjamin Percy, I think he had been in and out of comics, but main for, you know, at least five years. Brian Hill, 10 years. Jonathan Hickman, you know, like 15 years or so. Um, and Lenniel Francis Yu, by that time, he had been in comics for 20 years. So it was kind of a typical scenario where you're like, we're restarting things. We got Jonathan Hickman. We got some heavy hitters. Let's go. I like this. During the Q&A, a fan asked how Iceman, what's Iceman? hid that he was gay from the telepaths. Hickman joked, all of that can be answered in Heroes in Crisis number eight. Isn't really that funny. And then C.B. Sobolski said, those answers will keep coming. They, they never did. <laughs> so um, uh, then they're announcing this new thing, Destiny of X, where that's a lot of people. And I guess uh, Lanille Francis Yu is back. Um, and then uh, over here on Bleeding Cool, they're just kind of guessing who's going to be on each book. Now, Jerry Dugan, Benjamin Percy, still around. Uh, Brian Edward Hill lasted for, what, like six issues of his book. Uh, Teeny Howard is supposedly still there. Um, but uh, Vida Ayala, uh, still there. Possibly Leo Williams on one of them. Now, the thing that's interesting is that we've basically been told already that there are going to be two new writers to the X-Men. It's Steve Orlando and Al Ewing. Um, and when you notice this right here, and you notice the community that Vita is trying to create. Now, Vita is in a weird position. I would say she would be best described as an influencer. You don't want to make her angry because she's going to at least attempt revenge. She has a privileged status that I would say is more accurately described as uh, exalted and she knows her advantages and she swings them like a hammer afro latina that's two different ethnic groups trans and non-binary it's completely contradictory but technically it counts as two other gender expressions and of course gay so she is at the top of the progressive stack um, doesn't really sell so can't really negotiate for more money but does seem to be expanding influence and for the last year and a half or so uh and this is teeny howard no this is i think leo williams's description the trash queer squad i just did the air quotes that's not my quote that's theirs um which was teeny howard leo williams and vita ayala now no one specifically said yes we hire on merit but that's the implication the idea that 100% of the women writing series for the X-Men line, Krakoan storyline, that's statistically essentially impossible. Um, it's much more likely that someone is pretending to be bisexual because that gets you in the club and that gets you that you know higher level status. It's a protection. Um, uh, I actually totally forgot that Teeny Howard was in one, like one of the first Whisper Networks to take me down. This is like 2017, trying to get my Patreon taken down. Um, but uh, back then, she was basically just like an indie artist, um, bebopped around a couple of small assignments, uh, but hadn't really done uh, much. She started really with uh, apparently Jonathan Hickman getting her onto this. So I've always thought it very suspicious that a guy who plans everything, who would actually ask for a second take of him being, you know, robbed <laughs> so it can be more you know uh satisfying for everyone i thought it was very strange that they he would just wing it and i also thought it was also kind of strange that um the two new additions that we've definitely found out like yeah we're going to get them are both gay so we got all the women are gay the two men steve orlando and al ewing are gay or bisexual and then when Vita describes the ideal candidate for someone that even she, she did not click on this. <laughs> I think I'm the first person to actually click on it. So uh, what she wants is black and brown people, queer people, 
people that are not cis dudes, which means it's not a friendly environment for Brian Edward Hill because he's black, but he's also straight and cisgender. Um, uh, it is friendly for Al Ewing because he's claiming to be bisexual suddenly and it's a massive, massive advantage. <laughs> I actually saw one trans person on TikTok talking about this. It's like, hey, it's amazing when all, all the bisexuals just, just, wow, that's, that's a little suspicious. I feel like there's a lot of LGBTQ plus uh, Rachel Dolezals out there. Uh, but of course, I can't prove it because nobody can prove you aren't bisexual. Uh, but Vita is uh, putting out there what she wants. And it's not you. Unless you're black, black, black or brown, gay, and not cis. And another one she described, femme. Uh, so uh, it's a uh, very exclusive club of... 1% of 1% of the population, and uh, this thing is just about to die. I forgot to check this. It says 22 minutes, but it just did the thing where, you know, it, it powers down the brightness on my end. So I'm going to take that for a hint that this thing is just about to die. Anyway, it's just a theory. Um, I, I don't think it's a theory to guess that this is what she wants. There are exceptions to the rule. There are, you know, um, one of them is... Uh, when they were guessing who's going to be on what, they were talking about Tom Taylor or Cy Spurrier, who are, well, Tom Taylor's kind of asterisk gay. He's like, I'm not gay, but I'm going to wear a gay pride Superman, you know, logo on CNN. I'm going to turn a bunch of characters gay and I'm just going to talk. He's, he's, he's kind of minoritized himself. I went to go check on Cy Spurrier and shockingly, he doesn't have his sexuality or his pronouns on his Twitter profile. So... Dead man walking right there. Uh, I don't think they can get rid of uh, Leah Williams. Um, so I think she's going to be given some sort of spot. Uh, Teeny Howard is uh, basically guaranteed. And you can't fire Vita. <laughs> that hit piece uh, by the Daily Beast or BuzzFeed, uh, is they're just waiting to upload that one. Or, you know, it's already on the server. Just make it live. So anyway, as always, don't contact any of these people for any reason. Is this you, graphic novel? rock and roll ninja graphic novel and uh it's funny like i'm not reviewing comics and things are going just fine just like everyone else eventually you just quit because no one cares anyway thanks for watching bye